the new Labour leader's pitch uh, to voters in Scotland and across the UK is that he leads the party that's committed to fighting austerity. But of course that's a claim that's also being made repeatedly by the Scottish National Party and they stress that again at their annual conference in Aberdeen which is just finished. We're joined now from Aberdeen by the SNP's Westminster Group leader Angus Robertson and by Labour's, Labour's Shadow International Development Secretary Diane Abbott. Welcome to you both. Diane Abbott, let me come to you first. If you lived in Scotland and you inclined to an anti-austerity position, why would you choose Jeremy Corbyn over Nicola Sturgeon? As you know, the collapse of the Labour vote in Scotland was a long time coming, and we're not going to repair the position overnight. You know as well as I do. You know Scottish politics better than anyone. So it seems to me, though, that with Jeremy, you have the Labour leader best placed to turn the corner. We've already seen Labour membership in Scotland go up by a third, and I believe it will take time to rebuild Labour in Scotland, but Jeremy's the leader to do it. But given the mess you your party got into over the fiscal responsibility charter, it's not very convincing to be seen to be more anti-austerity than the SNP. They knew their position from the start. You were all over the place till you came to your position. The issue is about, ta the issue is about parliamentary tactics. Our policy position has always been that the answer to the deficit, and we take the deficit very seriously, is to invest for growth, to create growth and tax revenues, and that's the way ultimately you'll deal with the deficit. Angus Robertson, Nicola Sturgeon claimed that the Labour U-turn on the fiscal charter was because of SNP pressure. Have you got evidence for that? Well, I think it's pretty widely understood in the Westminster uh, village that Labour in Scotland realised that they were going to be in, in real difficulty going into the Scottish Parliament uh, elections next year, uh, voting with the Tories uh, on the Tory fiscal charter. Uh, and I, I think everybody understands that that was a part of the considerations that Labour uh, had to make because otherwise they would be exposed as being utterly hypocritical in saying that they were opposed to austerity whilst at the same time voting with the Tories. Of course, we've got long experience experience in Scotland now of the Labour Party working hand in hand with the Tories. They did, after all, uh, form the heart of the anti-independence campaign and they're paying the price for it electorally still to this day. Because you worked with the Tories when you were in a minority government too, but what do you say to that, Diana? Well, this is a different Labour Party. This is a Labour Party led by Jeremy Corbyn and you won't see us, we've already said on the question of the EU that Jeremy won't be going on platform to the Tories. You won't see us working hand in hand in glove with the though, Tories. Is there Jeremy Corbyn's got any cut through in Scotland. I mean, it was clear during the election campaign Mr Miliband had almost no cut through in Scotland at all, and we saw that in the results. Can you detect any more cut through for Mr Corbyn? Sure. As I said, our membership's gone up by a third in Scotland. Also, Jeremy gets amazing Their audiences. Their membership's gone up by about sevenfold, I think, Angus Robertson. Is it not? Uh, well, the leader of the SNP has over the Labour Party at the present time is, is 30 per cent, uh, and that is, uh, of course, a tremendous position to be in. But what will really matter is uh, the votes that are cast in the ballot box. I think we've had 24 by-elections since the general election. The SNP has won 22 of them. So we're doing very well, but we're taking nothing for granted. And I think where there is a division between ourselves and the Labour Party, because there is much that unites ourselves and, and Diane Abbott and, and Jeremy Corbyn, and hopefully they will stay true to their principles on, on for example, Trident. But we're already seeing further questions arise about the, the genuineness of, of their anti-austerity position that they now claim to have. We, we hear that somebody, one of their, uh, Dan's colleagues, was on, on the Mar show this morning uh, and, and couldn't confirm whether the Labour Party would reverse the Tories' planned uh, cuts to, to, to uh, tax credits. Now, that's an appalling situation to be okay. in. Uh, okay, the no, let me, let will me be put, okay, the I understand that. We would restore Hold tax on, credits. Hold on, Angus Robertson. Will, will you've Diane made a very good... Well, if you would just be quiet for a second, I could put the question to her, because uh, it's a very good point. What's the answer? We will not be dealing with the deficit on the backs of the working poor. Yeah, that's we, a general principle. Will you reverse the 4.4 billion of tax credits or not? We have voted against the tax credits and we are constructing a fiscal mandate which will not involve those cuts in tax credits. So you will reverse the cuts? You're going to have to look at John McDonald's fiscal mandate in its totality. When, we, when do I get that? Very soon. Come on, he's, he's working on, on it. Will and no doubt he'll come on this programme to discuss it with you. Well, I wouldn't hold your breath, but we, of course we would welcome if he did. Will you, uh, the question Angus Robertson is asking, will you reverse 
the tax credit cuts or not? I'm saying you're going to have to look at John McDonnell's fiscal mandate in the totality, but oh. we will certainly okay. not be balancing the books on the shoulders of the working poor. Oh, all right. Let them come back to you. I mean, Angus Robertson, in a sense, you can posture all you want on anti-austerity because you'll never have to implement a UK budget. I mean, this, this is just a continuation of your opportunism and politics of protest, isn't it? Well, well if, if that was the case, then the public wouldn't, I, I think, would see through that and wouldn't be supporting the SNP as they are in such strong uh, numbers. And we also stand on a record uh, in government in Scotland. We've been in since 2007. Uh, we're heading into uh, an opportunity for a historic third term. And Nicola Sturgeon has said that she will stand on a record what the SNP has been able to achieve in health, raising the budget from 9 to 12 billion. Uh, we've been able to protect free education in Scotland, That's a uh, free prescription charges. Robertson. able to do a lot. That's the, Labour, cash the Labour terms. Party has no record on any of these matters. All right, but let, you, you go on and on, your party, about austerity, austerity. How much has the Scottish government budget been cut in the past five or six years? Well, the, the Scottish Government has had to deal with very, very uh, difficult circumstances, as are, frankly, uh, budgets for government departments how, that impact How much on, has the uh, Scottish the rest of Government the, of that. Been I, I, budget I, I, been I, I cut? Don't, well, I, you, you, you'll, you'll, tell me, you'll tell me an exact number. You don't uh, you'll know. Tell me an exact number. You're the anti-austerity party and you don't know. Is the government... What I'm saying is that government budgets across the UK have been cut in, in Scotland too. And there was a choice in the general election. Again, we put it to the people. There was a different course that could be taken. Right. Unfortunately, the Labour Party did not pursue an anti-austerity course in the general election. The public looked at what the SNP was offering. They looked at what the Labour Party was offering. Okay. And they decided to back the but, SNP. But I looked at the figures, of which clearly you haven't done, or from your own Scottish government budget. These are the official figures of the Scottish government. Uh, in 2008-9, this is in real terms, comparing like with like, you had an overall budget of £35 billion. In real terms, this year, next year, you have an overall budget of just over £35 billion. In real terms, there's been no cut. Did you know that? Yeah, well, difficult, d difficult decisions are still having to be made uh, in government. We're here to talk about the opportunities at Westminster, where unfortunately many of the powers in relation to the budget and to finances are, are still exercised. And you have asked me to come on a programme to debate with Diane about what the relative positions are of the SNP and the Labour Party. Okay. Now I'd like to put uh, on record our position that we are happy to work with the Labour Party and with others in opposing the Tory government. Okay. It's not just about the austerity cuts that are impacting on the poorest in our society. It's also about policy choices that are coming down the line at Westminster. All right. And one of those really big decisions is on Trident. And I think it would be helpful to know whether the Labour Party is going to waste £100 billion on right. weapons of mass destruction that can be never used, right. which uh, has historically Mr. Robson, we been the principal much time, position so of Jeremy if you Corbyn. Want me to ask that a really question, important issue. If you, will if you want Labour, me to ask that question, which I'm Labour, anxious to do, it would help if you stop talking. So I could go straight. What is the, uh, the answer? He raises another good question. What's the answer? The leader of the Labour Party is opposed to renewing Trident. As it happens, I'm opposed to renewing What's Trident. What's your party's policy? But the majority of the Shadow Cabinet want to keep Trident. However, the policy is out to review. And those of us that think it would be madness to spend billions of pounds on a Cold War weapon we can never use hope that the review comes up with the right answer. Yes, but we learned this morning that even if you decide not to proceed with Trident, you will still commit to 2% of GDP on defence. So there's no saving in defence. You still be spending the same amount. That's not what Angus Robertson's talking about. Sam, correct? I'm not opposed to spending some of the money released by not renewing really Trident. No, no, this is on, all 2%. I'm not opposed. I can I tell you what I believe? That some of the money could well be spent on because the British Armed Forces have a great record on peacekeeping and humanitarian activity. But if you commit to 2%, there is no saving. The 2% includes Trident. If you commit to that, it's the same amount of, of money. I think just one final thing, one general final thing. Are you, I mean, are you up for working with Angus Robertson? If the two of you, it, but only by getting together do you come anywhere near the Tory majority. So are you up for working together? 
Of course, where we agree with the SNP, I'm confident the Labour Party will want to work with them. Where we disagree, of course, we can't. Will you have a cup of tea with Mr Robertson when he comes back down to London? I've had cups of tea with Angus Robertson before. Happy to have them again. There you are. I'm, uh, I've done my best to play the role of Kofi Annan, Mr Robertson. Thank you for joining us from Aberdeen, Diane Abbott, uh, here in London.